Hello and welcome back to this channel. Um, my video today will focus on connections and by that I mean relationships that we all form out there. Um, they say that it's easy to make something than to keep it. So when we make those connections and also develop those relationships, sometimes it becomes hard for us to maintain or have them going for a long time. So somebody might, uh, might ask why connections and the answer is when we go out there and want to make genuine connections, maybe in regards to finding people who will keep you uh, maybe grounded in one way or another or making friends if you don't have any. Once we make those friendships, once we make those connections, once we develop those relationships, how can we keep those relationships going? And uh, later in this video I'll be telling you about all those uh, types of relationships that maybe we might be interested in uh, nurturing and I'll talk mainly about three of them. So <clears throat> why must we keep nurturing those connections? Sometimes uh, friendships die, connections uh, die as well and relationships also die but why must we keep those uh, connections alive? Now nurturing our relationships is one of the most fulfilling pursuits in life. And I'll tell you why that is important later in the video. The research has linked people with strong social relationships to many aspects of health, from strong immune responses to a cold, just this usual cold, to longevity itself. People who feel more connected to others have lower levels of anxiety and depression, higher self-esteem, greater uh, empathy for others. They also are more trusting and cooperative and as a consequence of this, others are more open to trusting and cooperating with. According to a submission by uh, Stanford Medicine, social connectedness generates a positive feedback loop for social, emotional and physical well-being. There is no magic number when it comes to connections. We don't need to have a million friends or be an extrovert. Rather, it's the closeness of the connections we have and our ways of uh, maintaining those connections that makes such a difference to the quality of our lives. To foster more enriching and enlivening relationships, we also have to get to know the barriers within ourselves that limit us or keep us from getting too close to others. Here are some things we can work on to help build and maintain stronger connections. Now, we have to look at the role of attachment in our connections because it is important. Our attachment patterns will determine um, the kind of connections that we make in future. Attachment theory show how from a very young age having a secure attachment is like having a safe platform for, uh, from which we can venture out and explore the world. A secure attachment teaches us that we can trust and depend on others while feeling secure within ourselves. It also creates a model of how we expect others to behave throughout our lives. Human beings have a natural yearning to connect. We are born seeking what Dr. Daniel Siegel has called the four S's. And these S's are one, to feel safe, feel seen, feel soothed, and to feel secure. But in childhood, when we were first developing our patterns of attachment, hurtful events in which we didn't experience one or more of these uh, four elements may have led to insecure attachment patterns. In turn, we likely developed adaptations that left us more guarded when it comes to getting close to someone else. In order to remain in a vulnerable and open state, we have to stay alert to when these defenses are operating and actively work to stay connected. Understanding our early attachment patterns and adaptations can have a huge impact on how we feel and believe in our relationships. As we look at the role of our attachment patterns in maintaining connections, uh, we also have to look at the impact of loneliness 
as well because when talking about connections the lack of it means you are um, lonely and so what's the impact of loneliness on health these are things that uh, most of us brush shoulders with every day but uh, we don't we just take them for granted but the thing is loneliness can have dramatic consequences for your health loneliness can lead to disrupted sleep patterns, elevated blood pressure, and increased cortisol levels in, in your blood. Cortisol is generally a stress hormone. Um, it can affect your immune system and decrease your overall sense of contentment. Loneliness is also a risk factor for antisocial behavior, depression, and suicide. Older people are particularly vulnerable. If your mobility decreases, it can be harder to get together with other older people or other people that uh, are in your cycle. However, older people who remain connected with others and have strong relationships are likely to have a better quality of life, be more satisfied with their life, have a lower risk of dementia and a mental decline because they get to interact and share ideas and put their brain into work. They may have late onset of things like dementia and uh, other mental health issues if they were predisposed to have those so they also need less domestic support because they can do most of the things on their own now younger people or teenagers and people in their 20s are also at risk when they are isolated a lack of social relationship can have a direct impact on a young person's physical well-being by increasing the risk of obesity inflammation when injured and uh, high blood pressure What's more, the benefits of social ties are significant even if you have mortality risk factors such as uh, socioeconomic status like poverty, smoking, drinking, obesity and lack of physical activity are low. In other words, even if you live a healthy life, you still need to be socially active to stay well and happy. It is important to recognize that loneliness is different from solitude. Feeling lonely is a problem but being alone may not be a problem at all. Many people live alone and are happy and, uh, and have fulfilling lives. So how do you improve your social connections? Feeling lonely is hard to cope with. Luckily, there are things you can do to tackle loneliness. For instance, you can nurture healthy relationships with people who make you feel good by spending time with them and by trying to talk to someone every day. There are three kinds of connections that you can have with people. Remember when we were starting, I told you that I'll be talking about uh, some types of connections or social connections. And uh, these are the three types of connection that uh, you can have with people. One of them is the intimate connections with people who love and care for you, such as family and friends. The second kind is relational connections with people who you see regularly and share an interest with, such as uh, workmates or those who serve you serve your at the local cafeteria or local uh, cafe. So these are the kind of uh, these are the kind of connections we call relational connections. Uh, the third kind of connection is the collective connections. These are connections with people who share a group membership or an affiliation with you, such as people who vote like you do, or people who have the same faith, uh, same culture, same beliefs, religion, things like that. So when you are uh, trying to better or to nurture this, uh, this relationship, sometimes there are things that will hold you back from doing that. And this leads me to uh, the main purpose of this video, which was to find ways to help you uh, nurture those relationships or the connections. And the first way of improving social connections is by noticing uh, the inner critic luring you to be alone. Remember, we talked about the difference between loneliness and solitude. So, first identify the inner critic 
that is lowering you to be alone. Think about all the times we isolate ourselves. Sometimes it's because we need rest or we need respite or time to reflect. Other times a more destructive force is at play. Most of us have a critical inner voice that coaches us and lures us into self-limiting behavior. This voice is often at its loudest when we are alone, so that's where it likes us to be. It can sound like a sadistic bully, teeming in with thoughts like, just keep to yourself, that person doesn't really want to see you. Um, other times, it may even sound uh, soothing, feeding us thoughts like, why don't you just be alone? You can have a drink and relax, you don't need to. You don't need anyone anyway. Uh, the, the problem is once our inner critics uh, has us alone, it can once again become cruel, putting us down and bring us from our feeling connected to others. The second uh, avenue that could help with nurturing relationship is to be generous with yourself. To counter the directives of our inner critic, we can try to take actions that are in our best interest. This includes stepping outside ourselves and being generous with our time, reaching out to friends, especially during their difficult time, and showing an active interest in what someone is going through, and not just offerings uh, to the other person, but to ourselves. This helps us create deeper, more trusting bonds, as well as to step outside ourselves and gain perspective on things going on in our own lives. Because um, these difficult periods sometimes reminds us of what we are actually going through as individuals. So we get to get an inner, uh, an inner viewpoint at ourselves through, through them. So they might become our reflections or reflection points. Now, the third bit and uh, way of nurturing your connections is by giving connections the time and attention they need. Some of us think that just having connections is enough, but uh, do you give them time to develop or do you give them the attention that they need depending on the reasons why those connections were formed in the first place. It is easier to get lost in everything from our jobs and immediate responsibilities to our devices and endless streams of online entertainment. These things can certainly take up part of our days, but it is important to care for others, carve out actual space for the people who matter to us. Any effort we make to be fully present for any amount of time is rich with rewards, whether it is with our partner, our child, an old friend, or a new one. Being present brings out parts of us from which we can easily disconnect or even feel as if we've lost. If they aren't ignited if they're in, if they are if they are not ignited by spending time with specific people we should make the act of connecting a priority rather than regarding it as an important or a core or a chore um, the fourth way is to repair ruptures in the connections things inevitably happen in every relationship that cause ruptures miscommunication with our partner arguments with our kids, times we've lost, uh, we've lost it with a friend. All of these things will ultimately occur because we are human beings. We come to any relationship armed with a tougher inner critic and a complex attachment history. So there are bound to be ways um, we act in moments that we regret. The best thing we can do in these cases is to repair those ruptures. This means owning our behavior, being open and direct, acknowledging what happened and validating the other person's experience. Not necessarily by agreeing with everything they say, but by regarding their feelings and hearing them out with empathy. The reverse is true as well. When we have, uh, when we have felt hurt by someone we are connected to, we can also attempt repair by reaching out, acknowledging our heart, and trying to reach a shared understanding of what occurred between the two of us. The method we can use to nurture our connections is by taking chances on new activities. Even in this. Even in unstable periods of time, we can keep an open mind about new activities to try. That may mean creating a new kind of at-home adventure with our family 
or making friends in unlikely ways. Several people, some people uh, may find ways to volunteer. It could be physical or online volunteer work. And um, through this, you get to meet like-minded people, uh, interesting people even in the process. Staying alive to the part of ourselves that experiences new things and seeks to understand others actually makes us feel more vital and connected in general to the other people. So it does more than just uh, helping us connect more, but also help, helps us in keeping ourselves healthy and all that kind of stuff because we get to uh, feel more feel needed and feel uh, useful in the long run. The sixth and the last way or method to help us nurture relationships is uh, through making things happen. When it comes to social connections, we shouldn't shy away from being the one who makes things happen. Like, don't wait for other people to suggest something that can that all of you can done or both of you can done but be actively participating in trying to find things that you could do or activities that you could do together there's a reason they call it drifting apart when we lose a connection to someone it often happens gradually when less and less of an effort is made whether it's a romantic relationship or with an old friend who has moved away we should try to adopt an energetic an energetic attitude toward creating opportunities for connections with these people. This can be done in a fun, light-hearted way that doesn't put pressure on us, but rather invites us to be curious about what lights us up uh, when we are together or when we meet. If we approach connecting as another task on a do on a to-do list, it will likely feel overwhelming. Instead, we should see it as an opportunity to engage a part of who we are. A way we love to joke around, an activity we like to share, a fun experience we can plan and look forward to. Whatever works for us is something worth pursuing. We can always seek out connections in ways that are unique and meaningful to us. Staying curious and open to others is a gift we give them and ourselves. And um, Connecting doesn't have to feel like a burden or a task. So when you give yourself out uh, willingly and share yourself out with others, it doesn't feel like you, you have a burden to, to fulfill. It feels like something that is uh, fun. It feels like something that uh, naturally comes to you because you're motivated, you have the motivation, you have uh, drive, you have the willingness, your mind is looking forward to doing that and you just find yourself easily interacting with others without feeling pressure to do so. So when you try to do the six things that we've been talking about, it becomes easier for you because it's not like somebody is forcing your your hands or your your mind to feel like theirs or to act like, to behave in a certain way, you see. So it it takes a lot to maintain relationships, but making things happen, trying to find the critique in you that always tells you to be alone, all this kind of stuff will be able to help you redirect your way of thinking and actually work on this relationship and help you gain uh, what you need to gain from that, helping you uh, improve your way of life, helping you avoid certain kind of success, improving your immunity through the activities that you engage in with the others, and this goes a long way into helping you stay socially fit because they say that um, social capital is very important for you to be able to succeed in certain aspects of life so keep yourself connected do not separate yourself from social life because uh, because at the end of the day it will help you be a better person learn new things uh, break certain stereotypes and also know things that are going are going on around the world especially if you find yourself to be in a position where you live alone and uh, there is no one that you know uh, in your place so engaging in activities that bring people together might help you form those relationships and also maintain the relationships as well so bye bye uh, until next time this is what i had for today bye